back in the day, toy guns were a big part of every kid's life. Well, boys mainly. And way back in 1888, the first patent was made for an air gun by a company called Daisy Manufacturing. They made a lot of air guns, and their most popular one was the Red Rider. The closest air gun to the Red Rider is the Model 99, and that's what we're going to restore today. Hey guys, if you've known me for any length of time, you know I love video games. Not ones with sparkly rainbows and butterflies, but I need intense action and awesome graphics. And I get that with Raid Shadow Legends, the game you should be playing with me. The battles in this game are over the top, with a ton of masterful champions to choose from. Opening up the ancient blue shards gives you access to even more champions to battle with. The graphics are stunningly detailed. Check out one of my favorites, Gallic. You wouldn't want to meet this guy in a dark alley. Raid Shadow Legends is completely free to play on mobile and desktop. And now for a limited time, the daily login rewards for new players has been doubled from 90 to 180 days. You can find all of your rewards here. So check out Raid Shadow Legends now. Click on my special link in the description and you'll get 100,000 silver, two clan boss keys, 10 mystery shards, and a free powerful champion, the Executioner. This is only available for the next 30 days, so click the link in the description right now and I'll see you in the arena. Here it is, the Model 99 from Daisy. The official shooting education gun. This one looks like it was used quite a bit and probably left outside a lot. It's got a lot of wear and tear and rust. A perfect restoration project. Let's get to it. There's quite a few screws on this rifle and they've got to come out. And by the looks of them, they're going to need some 3-in-1 penetrating oil to loosen them up. So a few drops here and there and let it sit for a bit. And with a little encouragement and steady hand, I backed them all out. The lever was the first to be set free, and in general, it looks like it's in pretty good shape, although all the paint is pretty much gone. Then the wood stock was next, and it just slipped right out. This rifle has a front and rear sight, and the front sight comes out just by removing this one screw. The sling is attached to the front of the rifle with a hook and also a hook on the stock held in place with a little eye bolt, which we'll go ahead and remove. Now that the stock is off, this thing reminds me of a sawed-off shotgun. The shot tube, which holds the BBs, needs a little 3-in-1 treatment. After soaking for a few minutes, I grabbed my wrench and started muscling it out. It was a tight fit, but I was able to unscrew it and remove it from the barrel. It looks like it's in pretty good shape. The trigger is next, which has its fair share of rust. I figured out the hard way how to remove the spring anchor. Now this is a really tight fit, and I'll show you later the tool I built to reinstall it. The forearm is held in place with a little pin, and that needs a little tap or two. The plunger assembly was a really tight fit. I had to work on that for a bit and I finally persuaded it to get out of there. The final steps of disassembly are to remove the plunger head from the casing and then to remove the spring. Now it's cleanup time and all the small parts will be soaked in metal rescue overnight to remove the surface rust. Another successful removal, the parts are looking good. And 
now it's time for my favorite part, sandblasting. Only two pieces will need to be blasted, the main barrel and the lever. The main barrel turned out great and it's ready for some serious sanding to get us down to where we need to be before we paint it. Time to disassemble the front sight, which includes an insert and then three other pieces. Alright, it's time to break out my wire brush attachment for my Dremel and get to cleaning some parts up. And we'll start with the shot tube. Then some heavy duty wire brush action using my grinder. I'll do the plunger assembly, which includes the spring and also the trigger. And now on to the stock. Well, the clear coat is pretty much shot and the stain is in bad shape. So we're gonna sand this right down to raw wood. And the forearm will get the same treatment. Okay, the wood pieces are looking good, but we have to do something with this emblem. Now it feels like it's made out of a plastic and it's probably glued in place. So I'll use my handy heat gun to loosen things up and then get under there with my X-Acto knife and work my way around that emblem until it's finally free and in one piece. Okay, let's finish these main pieces and I'll start with the stock and forearm. I'm going to use wood conditioner because this is a little bit of a soft wood. And then I'll follow that up with a nice colored stain. After that, it's a couple of coats of clear. Now on to the metal pieces, the barrel assembly and lever. Both parts are going to get a couple of coats of primer and then I'll finish them off with black semi-gloss. The main pieces for this daisy rifle turned out great, so now it's time to reassemble. The forearm will get attached by reinserting that pin. Then I'll reassemble the plunger assembly. Then the plunger assembly gets pushed down into the barrel. Now in order to squeeze that spring down to insert the spring anchor, I made this tool with two 1 16th inch diameter pieces of metal and a piece of wood. That helps me get on both sides of the plunger, push down on the spring and insert the spring anchor. Now it's time to put the screws to it and I replaced some of the screws and the other screws I was able to wire brush the heads down just to get them looking better. After all the screws are in place, I didn't really like the way the different colors looked so I grabbed some black paint and meticulously painted each of the screw heads just to give it a nice finished look. 
Then I reassembled both the front and rear sights. And to finish the stock up, I had to add that emblem. So I used some contact cement, liberally applied that, and stuck the emblem in place. It looks great. So what about that sling? Well, that web fabric would not come clean. I had a couple of rust stains. I could not get them out. In fact, if you have a suggestion, leave it in the comments. But I tried virtually everything. So it's time for a new sling that I made out of some black material, added some brand new clips, and I think it's gonna give it a nice streamlined modern look. Okay, it's time to test this thing out and see how it works. I'll load some BBs in the shot tube, and then insert the shot tube in the barrel and screw it down. Okay, it fires. While it doesn't seem extremely powerful, I think it might need the seals replaced inside if I could ever find those. But this Daisy Model 99 is now shooting some BBs. Now one thing I would change if I were to restore another one of these would be to powder coat that lever because it gets a lot of action and you can see where the paint is starting to wear off. So there you have it, the Daisy Model 99 rifle restored from old to new. This was probably one of my most challenging restoration projects, and I really enjoyed doing it. If you'd like to check out some of my other projects, click one of the boxes on the screen. Hey, thanks for watching Kip K Restored, and we'll see you next time.